Welcome back to the Typhoon Legacy channel. I've got a bunch of pieces for the forward monocoque over at our sponsor Pyrotech Aerospace for heat treatment right now. So while they're gone, I'm going to be working on this. Uh, this is the upper spar tube, uh, upper forward spar tube. So it's identified as cross strut BB. Um, the wings attach at this point here. And you can see one of the reasons that the Typhoon had such vibration issues was because the Sabre was actually mounted to the main spar. And that's what this is here. Um, in fact, on this aircraft, this was another 609 Squadron aircraft that was shot down uh, during the Battle for Normandy in 1944. Um, you can see in this case, the Sabre is actually still partially on the engine mounts. Now, um, these are the, the feet of the Sabre, and instead of having the engine mounts break away from the structure, the Sabre actually broke away from itself. Uh, I guess that's a bit of a testament to the strength of the Hawker Typhoon and the design that we're working with here. Um, now these are later engine mounts, and it was, uh, I mentioned vibration, or I mentioned that the engine was actually mounted to the spar. Uh, that resulted in a lot of vibration being transmitted into the airframe. So this was one of the, the corrections for that. The original rear feet uh, mounts for the, uh, the Sabre were a solid steel bracket that uh, transmitted vibration very well from the engine directly into the main uh, frame of the Hawker Typhoon. So these ones are a, uh, basically a base and a cap uh, with a vulcanized rubber in between to isolate the metal from each other and all the vibrations. So it did quite a bit of uh, good work in reducing the, the painful excessive vibrations that were felt from the pilot. With our new spar fittings nearing completion, I wanna take these apart, remove these engine mounts, uh, disassemble them, see what's going on inside. The rubber's gonna to be toast. We're currently researching having uh, new rubber uh, uh, vulcanized into these, these mounts, but I wanna take them off and see if we can salvage these. Send them, uh, once they're removed, we'll send them for uh, mag particle inspection and see if there's any cracking or damage that would make them uh, unserviceable. My fingers are crossed that they will come back and pass those tests and we'll be able to uh, basically rebuild them with their proper rubberized uh, coating. So our first step is gonna to be to pull the, uh, the attaching bolts. Now these bolts go up into the mount, the lower piece of the mount. Um, but you can see they've got these interesting neck spacers on it. The only thing we can theorize about that is that it was to help for access because this was such a, a difficult area to get into, but I mean, at the same time, you could just use an extension on your ratchet, right? So, In preparation for this, I soaked all of the fasteners on this uh, just to make it a little bit easier. These were all lock wired together. I don't know what the torque spec was on it. Um, I'd imagine we'll be using a standard torque spec for the fastener diameter. Um, but uh, just on quick investigation here, it's a three eighths Whitworth, they're very loose. So it's not uh, not gonna be too troublesome. I hope to get all these off. I better knock on wood there. Um, but the first thing is it's pretty tight and there's a little bit of corrosion on them. So I'm just gonna brush them off. Whoa, there's still grease in there. Look at that. Little bent on that one. This is also giving me a lot of hope that the inside of the mount is in good condition. The fact that these things are coming out like this is just amazing. And that's the last one right there. So here we go. Whoa, there's a lot of weight to that thing. Holy smokes. So I just weighed this and it's 19.4 pounds. Uh, probably not a lot of weight from this piece of uh, saber casting, but that engine mount is very robust and uh, really, really impressive. So I'm gonna ooh and awe over this um, without filming it. And I'm gonna go ahead and take the second one off here and uh, then we'll start tearing them down a little bit further. So I've got both of these off now. They look pretty good. There is a little bit of corrosion under the, uh, the edges of them and some really minor, minor pitting inside here. So we'll see what we can do about fixing that. Uh, basically the, the inner mating surface that went onto the spar tube or the spar fitting looks really good aside from very minor defects. Um, all to say it's just visual at this point and uh, we really need to dig into these farther. So the next step is gonna to be to take them apart. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, start disassembling the lower half and the upper half and taking off that chunk of uh, Sabre crankcase. 
Okay, so this is the aircraft's port side rear engine mount, and we're gonna go ahead and disassemble this, and I'll explain exactly how these things are assembled. So there's still a little bit of uh, crash site soil in here that needs to come out. Uh, there's also a lot of lock wire on these, and same thing, I've found that the, uh, the, the torque on these fasteners is absolutely minimal. So this is just the end cap. There's two end caps, of course, uh, one on the other side that I'll take off momentarily. But that opens it up so that you can see what's going on inside. This piece of steel here is what was attached to the spar on the Typhoon. And then the only bond between it and the engine side is this rubber that's uh, injected into there, uh, which bonds to an inner part here and creates a very strong bond between two steel pieces. So essentially the only thing connecting the Sabre to the uh, airframe spar or the aircraft spar is this rubber. There's that second end cap. Uh, these, interestingly, they've got, they're marked with what I believe to be the, uh, the standard for the material that they're made of, and that is DTD-412, so I'll look that up later. So now that we've got the end caps off, we can go ahead and take this, the cap off of this assembly here, and that's uh, two slightly larger uh, fasteners, or sorry, four slightly larger fasteners. Okay, so that's those four bolts. Now you'll notice there's a plug here and a plug over here. Uh, and they're gonna have to come out too because they extend in to that plate. So to do that, it's got a locking tab and a locking washer in there. So we'll just flatten that guy out. So there you go. There's that uh, the locking washer, pretty standard stuff for these type of engines. And there's the plug. Now there's one of those on the other side as well. So now that all of those are out, we can separate this casing that is still attached to the foot of the engine and the inner part, the two sides of the mount itself. To do that, I'll just put a little pressure in here. So this assembly comes out, and now you can see it's just those two halves, the inner and the outer, or lower I guess, and the bonded rubber that's in between them. And this housing that you can see up here is the one that attaches directly to the Sabre. And you can see those bolts located in there. We'll unlock the tabs. These ones are slightly different. There's two little locking tabs on each one. Now, of course, these are steel bolts with a steel assembly and they're going into an aluminum housing. So that housing's gonna have uh, some sort of bushing in it, I'd imagine. Uh, Merlin we and the Sabre, we found that there's a lot of bronze bushings that are in there. So there we have the engine mount to engine bolt. Great shape too, lots of grease. And there we go. That's the upper, I think you'd call it a case for the, uh, the engine mount. Again, lots of part numbers on it. We'll have to check those out and make sure everything's uh, documented and uh, we'll get these things cleaned up.
for our next phase with them. So a quick recap on the assembly of that. The inner shell, inner steel shell is fit to the spar fittings that are on the, the main spar for the Typhoon, bonded with rubber to an inner shell that is also attached to an outer casing. And the outer casing is attached to the aircraft's engine. So pretty nice system. I don't know if we're gonna be able to salvage these inner two pieces, but they're not overly complex. It'd be amazing to be able to salvage them. Um, but these, the outer casings will definitely go for uh, non-destructive testing and we'll see what we can do uh, to salvage those. They, they are fairly complex. They look to be a cast component. Um, so if we can save those, it'll save a ton of time and money for the project. Both of those are now apart and need a thorough cleaning. I'll get those done and we can move on to the next step of uh, sending them off for NDT. Now, I just wanted to touch base on the style of mounts again. Uh, I mentioned at the beginning of the video that the Typhoon originally had a solid steel mount uh, that bonded or attached the engine to the, uh, the spar, leading to vibrations, of course. When the Tempest came about, the fuel tank ended up being in front of the first firewall. They had to add a second firewall, so the engine was moved forwards. In doing so, the rear feet of the Sabre were no longer on the main spar, and there was no longer a massive vibration issue. When they did that, they went back to the solid steel mount, and I'm not really sure of why they did that. I, I would think that this would be the better option in either case, um, but interestingly, yes, it was a complete reversal back to the original solid steel mounts as in the very early Typhoon. Thank you all very much for watching. I hope you found this interesting. I did. <laughs> Taking these apart was really cool. Uh, we've got some drawings for them, but not all, and uh, it, it brings a better understanding to the whole process. Um, now, if you want to see more videos like this and uh, some of the stuff that we've been working on recently that's very exciting, please do head over to our subscription page. Join the ones that are supporting us now. For a couple bucks a month, you can see everything early and with no ads and support the project. Thank you very much, guys. Take care.